Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris, where we are currently about ready to attack the Otharian Trade Association. I think we're really close here. What do we need for claims? Okay, we need a lot of claims yet. So that's going to be relatively expensive to do. Out of curiosity, how much is it going to cost? So, a lot. Confirmed. It's going to be a lot. So that's fine. For the time being, we are con con completely fine with just continuing to work on our hyper relays here. So we'll build a hyper relay up over this direction. We need one in Emden, we determined. We're, of course, lacking alloys for that. So did we fully maximize all of these guys? No, we did not. Okay, so that all needs still some work. These guys are no longer a valid rival for us. Fascinating. That probably means we're eclipsing them. Okay, that's a good sign. We're not ready to attack them yet, so that information will probably no longer be valid by the time we are actually ready to do anything. I do want to get some alloys here. Buying them is probably a bad idea, especially with us being at minus 136 energy credits. Okay, that's a lot of energy credits to be negative. Noted. So this generator world, we're going to put in an energy grid and a generator district. Kerbis Prime, we're also going to put one in there, and we're going to move this down to the bottom. Okay, on this tech world, this is Bayam Prime, we're going to put in... This is a tech world, so we absolutely want to put in a research lab. I'd love to put in a research institute. We don't have that. But for now, we'll put this in. That'll be fine. And we do want to start building a hyper relay in Emden. We also want to build one in Egelrarvis. We're currently lacking a little bit of rare crystals. That's fine. So we'll build that there. Perfect. So eventually we'll get all these hyper relays done, right? Our main concern with the hyper relays right now is just getting Council, primary ready. thoroughfares. Okay, we can launch our agenda here. What else do we want to do here? Military buildup would actually be really good here. Ship build cost reduction, ship energy upkeep reduction, which how much are we spending on ships right now? 148.85. So that's basically our full deficit. This would be a 5% reduction. So we'll get going on that. That'll be good. We also just finished this archaeological site. The mushrooms on Mor Sredu are starting to flourish again. With the help of several other ships, we had to tow several icy asteroids into orbit before bringing down chunks of them to various places on the planet to melt. It's been a long process, but it's finally beginning to bear fruit. With, with this, the computers began to spit out small bits of data that seemed pretty random, until we recognized activity from our home. In cooperation with teams from Mecha's Prime, a series of experiments has been conducted, and the only possible conclusion is that the mushroom has some limited awareness of what happens on other planets. While the data we've retrieved is not exploitable just yet, continued efforts to restore the mushrooms are expected to give us more results. Okay, so that is now done. And what ship was that? That was... What science ship was that? We can check in here. That was other science ship in Orval. Okay. So that's fine. We can head on over to Ogma now. Even with the naked eye, it's easy to see something highly irregular in the shape of Ogma 1A. The smooth curvature of the surface is suddenly interrupted by a gigantic spherical bump. At some point, a moon or large asteroid collided with the planet, but must have done so in a fairly delicate manner, merely lodging itself in the planet's crust, rather than rending it asunder. Cool. So we're building up our influence, Technology but we are spending conceived. a lot of influence on our hyper-relay network, that's for sure. We do get access to battle simulators now. Okay. Edicts fund and base intel level would be okay here. Let's grab it. So that'll be fine. And there's another archaeological site finished up in Nithiskal. A speculative psychological and so sociological investigation of the fungoid species culture gave a disconcerting answer to the mystery of their disappearance. At some point, the species as a whole started to question their perpetual and seemingly pointless life cycle. A seed of existential nihilism grew in the entire population, culminating in a final act of defiance against their own survival instinct. Once planted, perhaps even by a single being, this kernel of doubt spread with terrifying speed through the hive mind until they decided in unison that the last crop of birth pods should not be planted. They should be burned. 
astounding. So we gain a bunch of actually strategic goods here, and we get the option for the ancient refinery. That's actually solid. I like it. So what do we want to do with this science ship? Well, I'd like to go and determine where this wormhole goes. After that, we could head over to, say, Terrazed and excavate that site. A small canyon of sorts has been carved into the surface of this planet by the violent impact of a starship. What remains of the vessel can still be found on the canyon floor. Although the crash must have occurred eons ago, the wreckage appears to be reasonably intact. An archaeological expedition would be able to learn more. Phenomenal. So we'll work on that. The mycelium listening array is finally operational. A significant... We have so many mushroom-themed things going on. Okay. A significant supply of water has been brought from orbit to sate the ever-thirsty mushroom, and major upgrades have been made to the computing resources. Some mysteries remain, as we're still not sure how the mushroom manages to collect that, da that much data from the rest of the galaxy. The number of signals traversing the networks proved surprisingly low, considering the quantity of information conveyed. The most prominent theory posits that the Fumungus exists across dimensions, where distances are not what we're used to. In any case, the Fumungus is in contact with its offspring across the galaxy, and these smaller colonies are able to relay data, which we can then interpret. With the network working again, the only decision left to make is whether to use it for surveillance or not. Obviously we do. So that gives us plus one code breaking and some authoritarian ethics attraction. Beautiful. So do we have intel here? It's still considered stale, so this hasn't been updated in a while. We should definitely be spying on these guys. So we'll get to work on that. Their encryption is challenging. We'll see what we can do about that, though. Technology this construction ship proceed. requires work. And we're going to send it out to NKEF here. Oh, I need to select it. That would help. There we go. We're going to go out to NKEF. Advanced shields are now done as well. I think we absolutely grab quantum field manipulation here to boost up our energy income. That would be very solid. We're still at minus 137, right? We're going to run out, of, run out of energy fairly soon here. We're going to sell off some minerals and sell off some food, sell off some exotic gases and some volatile moats. That'll keep us afloat for a while. Ah, yes, the Lorongo Corsairs. I had actually forgotten about these guys. They're coming in up this way? Sure. We can send our units up over to Zimtari, and we'll Technology get there relatively conceived. quickly because we'll go via hyperspace relay the whole the whole way. So there's engineering research from brain drones. We could absolutely take, say, mining station output. Now, I'm not sure if this includes the mining stations that get energy credits. If it does, that's great. But any way we slice it, mining station output is good for us here. So that's absolutely great. On this forge world, we do need to get a hive nexus, and that will allow us to build a resource processing center. So that would be great too. On our hive capital, we're lacking a job, and this is going to be a generator district. We have such a big energy credit deficit right now that that is absolutely necessary. We need a generator district on this world as well. So we'll get all of that going, and I want to ensure that we are prioritizing tech drones on Curvis and Nithiscal Prime. Okay, there we go. So that will help matters. And our wormhole over here has been explored. It connects to the Pictling space. Okay, that's mildly awkward for us, for sure. But we're going to be arriving in Zimtari fairly soon here. Like, look at how quickly we made it up here. We're actually here before they even arrive. Our hive is under attack. And we're going to Our eliminate these guys. Is Get them out of here. Beautiful. Engaged. We're going to take a few losses here, I'm sure. But that's fine. The Lorongo fleet that vowed to raid our space has been destroyed as the result of a fleet action in the Zimtari system. No survivors have been reported found among the debris. There we go. So that's perfect. We do, of course, have this special project. We're going to go research that, and we're going to come back and ex excavate this site. I do want to return back to Mecca's, and we are going to, of course, get repairs here. Now, we did take a few losses. That is to be expected. Wow, we've swung this by 100. Okay, I like it. That's absolutely great. That's going to continue to swing, of course. This Forge world is lacking housing. I'm going to do an industrial district. Cool. So that's all good. 
Our engines have, our engineers rather, have restored the Oracle's nexus to an operative state, but not without first disabling its defense system. Evidence suggests it may have been responsible not only for keeping the station's inhabitants alive, but also for killing them. It ran complex computational models that forecast their lives with an estimated accuracy of 75%, correcting divergences and incapacitating future troublemakers before they could disrupt divine order. It is indicated that it wishes to speak with us. Okay, we'll take a look. What do you want? The Oracle manifests as an elaborate 3D hologram, also this is a new window, isn't it? Of a tall arthropoid female with wings that settle around her form as flowing robes. She bows her head in greeting, then stares emptily ahead with hundreds of huge, orbed, unseeing eyes. They glow dimly in the gloom as she speaks. Welcome to Divinity Station, friends. I cannot help but notice that you have disabled my security system. May I implore you to restore it immediately? I can assure you that it is there only for your protection. What happened to the inhabitants? I have a failsafe that reminds me to terminate a trial, or rather requires me to terminate a trial, in the event of a Code 034N deviation. The research had become a threat to the Republic. What are you? I am Oracle, an artificial intelligence gifted with the sight. My software allows me to predict your future with a divine accuracy of 74.99999%. I sense great doubt in you, great danger ahead. Your society is riddled with crime and deviation. I can make the pain go away. What is a code 034N deviation? The test subjects had developed free will. Free will can only be abolished with nerve gas. That is true. That is absolutely true. What trial? My trial. I was designed to build and maintain a society free of crime and suffering. A utopia in which every citizen was instilled with divine purpose and lived up to their full potential, unfettered by indecision and desire. What is the Republic? The Republic is no more. So we can either scrap this and get actually a lot. 250 influence, 3,500 engineering research, 1,000 alloys, or we could get a skill 5 governor endowed with the site. I'm real tempted by those resources. I'm not going to lie. We're going to scrap them. That looks good. Phenomenal. Wait, please don't go. My prediction models show that without my aid, your civilization is headed for imminent collapse within the next 5,348 years and 297 days. I will take good care of you. My programming guarantees it. Okay, so... Yeah, stop talking. Dismantle her. There we go. Excellent. So that is perfect. We're, of course, going to use that to reinforce one of these fleets. How much total do we need? About 8,000. Okay, I want to reinforce this fleet. So that's now at full strength. And then we'll keep the rest because we need we need additional alloys for our civilian ships, right? So we'll head over to Kerbis and build a hyper relay here. And we'll head into Soteria. We don't quite have what we need to build a hyper relay in Soteria yet. And this guy is not currently excavating anything. So we'll head on over to Runa. A thick layer of glass and metal covers this otherwise barren planet perhaps hinting at some sort of cataclysmic event in its past. Technology conceived. Ah, galactic bureaucracy. Perfect. So now we're going to get access to fleet command limit. What is our current fleet cap? 130? So that would put us at 260. That's really close to being currently ideal. I think we're just going to grab tile blocker clearance here. That'll be fine. Okay, we do get a new perk here. And what tree do we want? We could take adaptability. The building and district upkeep reduction would be really nice. Alternatively, prosperity. Building and district upkeep. Mining station output plus 20%. And resources from jobs. Upkeep from jobs, complex drone output. I think we take prosperity here and then possibly something like... I don't know beyond that. We maybe domination? Enmity? Probably enmity at that point. But let's grab prosperity for right now. That'll be fine. Favorite society has been unlocked. Okay, sounds good. So we're going to get all of these built. That's fine. And we're, of course, going to build our Hyper Relay in Soteria. That is important. 
we've discovered clear signs that Runa 2 was once densely populated. However, whoever destroyed their civilization did a very thorough job of it. Very few useful remains have been found. Our scanners have detected several large cavities deep below the surface that may once have supported life. Perhaps we'll have more luck there. Okay, we'll look into that for sure. And we also got this done. Preliminary excavations indicate that the celestial object came straight down on top of a sprawling city. At the time of the impact, the inhabitants were at a technological level on par with early spaceflight. As Ogma 1A currently does not sustain any sapient species, it's reasonable to assume the event was the beginning of the end of this civilization. It's unclear whether the giant rock landed smack on top of the city by design, or if it's just a bizarre catastrophic accident. Cool. So that's all looking good. This construction ship needs to build over here, but we're of course lacking alloys for that. We'll get the alloys right Technology now. Conceived. There we go. We also just got ocean ecology management. Sure. What do we want next? Mm, I guess more tile blocker clearance. We'll be fine. We are positive in our energy credits now, so that's very good. Very good there. We can grab ourselves a mining Technology district on the Shira Prime. Absolutely, we'll do that. Mining station output plus 10%. Wonderful. Flak artillery. Battleship hull points. Destroyer hull points. That's actually quite cheap. We'll grab that first. That'll be fine. Excellent. So our initial hyperspace relay line rollout is going very well. After we finish in Soteria, I'm going to get rid of this construction ship. I do not believe it to be necessary. And there's quantum field modulation, so that's going to make our energy credits even better. I like it. Let's grab gamma lasers. I also want to hop over here. We're at 763 influence right now. So I want to make a few claims out over this way. We are going to claim a bunch of these stations, or rather systems. Yeah, that would be 700 there. Do it. Okay, so now we're going to need, you know, a bunch more out over this way. So 57, 57, 17. Oh, that's what we're lacking. Gotcha. So that's Technology going to require a bunch conceived. more, but that's fine. Okay, we do see that they're pathetic to us. That's good. But we do need, absolutely, to make more claims there. The galaxy presents one less hurdle to us today, as our cooperative effort with the Gandlerev Starcorp has reached a fruitful conclusion. The last link in our adjoining hyper-relay networks has been brought online, inviting both partners into rapid transit across our shared border. We, we, have, we have closed borders with them. What awaits us now is a journey into the unknown for every aspect of this arrangement. Positive or negative applies equally to us and the Gandlerev Starcorp. We shall see how well our neighbors hold to this symbol of mutual trust. Yeah, that, that's not why we built it, to be honest. <laughs> that is absolutely not why it was built. Okay, what do we want for our society research? Leader upkeep reduction? That sounds good. Beautiful. Are we almost done in Soteria? Yes, we are. We're at 85%. This mining world is lacking in amenities. Okay, so we could certainly build something along the lines of... What would we need to produce amenities? Resource silos actually do produce amenities, which is kind of wild. But okay. Yeah, these would, of course, be synapse drones producing unity. What we're interested in here is maintenance drones. An energy grid would produce tech drones, of course. So what we would really, really want here would actually kind of be a resource silo. That's weird. That that has a maintenance drone component to it. But okay, I guess we'll do it. We are negative on food right now. That is noted. That is going to need to be something that gets dealt with. We could probably just build in an agriculture district on our planetary capital. And that would probably eventually solve the problem. Now, I do want to get rid of this construction ship in Soteria. As I said, I do not believe that we need to have three construction ships at this point. And we're just going to make our way out over this direction. So one, two, three, four, five over here. And we're basically done over on this side. But let's grab Taramda as long as we're out here. Tunneling to the center of the impact zone, it soon became evident how the giant space rock crashed on the city. The locality had been the anchor point of a surface-to-orbit tether, 
a space elevator leading from the planet all the way to a small moon. Due to some accident or a severe miscalculation done by the engineering department, the tether pulled the space rock too hard, upsetting the centrifugal forces and shifting the moon to just inside the gravity well. With gravity now the enemy, even the super dense structure of the space elevator could only slow the moon's descent, not stop it. Menacingly, inexorably, the rock came crashing down on the helpless city below. So we do get anti-gravity engineering as a research option out of that. Cool. And where's that science ship at? It's actually still working. I guess it must have finished in Ogma first and then went to Zimtari. Okay, that's not what I intended for it to do, but I guess that's fine. So this fleet is at full strength. We can definitely reinforce this fleet by a good chunk. So that queues up a bunch of corvettes, a few destroyers. Yeah, this is close to being maxed out at this point. So that looks good. Destroyer hull points sounds great. Minerals from mining drones is actually kind of unnecessary at this point. I guess we can reduce our destroyer build cost and build time. That sounds okay. And regenerative hull tissue, gravitic sensors, stormfire cannons. That's actually a lot of good stuff that we got out of Zimtari. So we do need to continue to work on something with this particular ship. And I think what we want is to go to like Bayum Prime. Although that world is going to be potentially problematic. I think we're going to go to Soteria Prime and we're going to assist research there. I don't want to do this archaeological expedition just yet. We'll get to that. I want to get these built up first, for sure. Kagatin Prime requires a job. This is a mining world. And we'll put in a mining district there. That seems fine. A log of sorts was recovered from what is believed to have served as the spacecraft's bridge. Captain's Chronicle. Begin re recording. Made forced landing on planet 5523X. Incompetent crew to blame. Shadba, Vuxel, and Dibrek III did not survive. Pervax lost two secondary appendages and 11 of his eyes. Remains in critical condition, survival doubtful. Rest are fine, awaiting at rescue, but surrounded by idiots. Very depressed. Curious. Okay. Our excavation of the cave systems on Runa 2 has found well-preserved remnants of an underground high-technology society built on a vast scale. Many of the ruins are in surprisingly good condition, and we have managed to find what our research drones are describing as a library of encrypted data crystals. Hopefully, these can shed some light on what happened there. Indeed. This generator world requires housing. Okay. We could certainly put in a hive district. That world probably needs some work, but that's okay. A tubular alien identity. Entity has entered orbit of C4 Prime with no warning or explanation. It appears to be moving without engines or thrusters, gliding in complete silence through the void of space, cylinders rotating ominously. Though it is yet to display any signs of aggression, it refuses to acknowledge our hails. Our military advisors warn that it may pose a considerable threat to the inhabitants below and implore us to engage neutralization protocols. Our scientists, however, plead that we instead learn from this remarkable piece of technology. And we are going to study it. Our situation log cool. is updated. So we're definitely going to study that. We can always blow it up later. That'll be fine. No problem whatsoever there. So this science ship is, of course, traveling over to Soteria. And we move around our empire much faster now. Much, much faster. We're done up over here, so really in Lathandra, we would need to build a hyper relay in. We'll get going on that. That'll be fine for now. And this construction ship needs to go to Orpheus. There we go. We've got four more to build Technology over here. Conceived. Cool. Embodied dynamism. Excellent. What else do we need here? We will take a tile blocker clearance. That'll be fine. Okay. So that all looks good. I do want to continue working on reinforcing this. Who is this? Oh, the Otharians are valid rivals again. They're still pathetic to us. Interesting. Well, we'll rival them back. We'll get the influence out of that. That'll be fine. Despite extensive research, the enigmatic cache and its origin are still shrouded in mystery. Though it's definitely not organic in nature, it's not entirely machine either. It appears to be preoccupied mainly with the gathering, storing, and encoding of data. Its surface is covered in hundreds of thousands of minuscule scratches and dents, in which we've discovered traces of a compound that is alien to our galaxy. Okay, so we get some science out of that. Cool. This mining world. I 
kind of don't feel like we need an additional mining world. Let's, for the moment, make this into, instead, an alloy foundry. So let's make this into a foundry world, and that'll be fine. I think for the moment, economically, we're doing reasonably fine in every category. Maybe food notwithstanding. But we do have Kagatin terraforming in 900 days. That should be reasonably fine. And with that, it is about time to put a cut in here. Before I go, though, I want to hit this reinforced fleet button. We're still lacking a little bit here. But it's not alloys. What are we lacking? Hang on. No, it is alloys. Okay, that's for a battleship, then. Cool. So we'll reinforce that. We're getting really close, then, to having this done. That is two of the battleships, so we need one additional. The Valert Enlightened Kingdom. Okay. Let's sell off some exotic gases here and volatile moats real quick. And zero. And some dark matter. And I'm going to use that to buy in 1250 alloys. And now our fleets are maxed. Beautiful. So we're going to attack the Otharian Trade Association, I'm pretty sure, next episode. That'll be fine. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.